Well, if you've been around the home automation world, you probably know exactly what this is, but maybe not this exact model. You can see there, it's the Raspberry Pi 5. Yeah, the, we've played around with the three, the four, even the zeros, doing all the home automation things with Home Assistant. So is it worth it to get the Raspberry Pi 5 for Home Assistant? If you wanna skip on past the hardware, you can go see some of the chapters where we do some comparisons on timing between the Raspberry Pi 4 and 5 down below. But if you wanna hang around for the hardware, yeah, they've done a few things different is they've actually had this heat sink now even though there is also an additional case which i will put on here in a second i did notice that they've done this ethernet chip at a little 45 degree angle um this crazy power supply over here because of the amount of power this thing pulls and well everything else is pretty much kind of the same i mean usb-c two hdmis Got these two headers here. You got another one here. I haven't really used these myself. I think they're like for screens, cameras, etc. This is also that PoE hat that was crazy expensive for the four. It was much cheaper just to do a Ethernet splitter yourself. I believe it's the same Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip underneath there. And your same GPIO header that many love to use and add different things. Now you get your ethernet on the side here, USB 3.0 for the blue, or maybe it's higher. I'll have to check the specs, but I always just refer to those as USB 3 and then the slower USB 2. Nothing else crazy different on the back. You've got your same little micro SD card that goes on the back here. I have not experimented with this one for doing any type of other like NVMe or SSD, etc. I just use this for small projects and the micro SD is perfectly fine. Um, if I want to go to something bigger, I'll probably go to a bigger um, little like N95 or something like that that has NVMe and x86. So with that said, I want to put this case on because, yeah, I want to put Home Assistant. They have come out with the Home Assistant HAOS for the Raspberry Pi 5. There is a image for this now that is a RC1 release candidate, and it does seem to work well. So the case here has this built-in little fan that we're going to plug in to the unit itself yeah because this thing does get rather warm when you continue to add performance well you're going to continue to add heat and now you need to dump that heat off so we've got a little heat sink there to add on top of here and got some other pads oh that's for the feet of here you want to do this og you can put those stickers on there. Perfect. Like, look, I did one. You can put those in there. So we'll pop this heat sink on here, like so. I'm guessing they don't need a heat sink for the other, the I.O. chip or the RAM. I've seen some little kits that put heat sinks on basically on top of everything, but this fan should keep it pretty cool. So I'm assuming probably the best thing to be would leave this top off because you want the fan to be able to cool the thing off. And as soon as OG gets done with the stickers, we will put this all together. I need to pop in the fan. OG is patiently waiting for me so we can play some Halo on the OG Xbox. So many OGs, right? It probably just pops together and holds it. Yeah, if you pop that together, not sure oh it has a little bit of air there's a little bit of a gap that in between here if you can see that so i don't know we'll leave the case on top and see what it does and see if it overheats or anything like that so you can still get to the micro sd card now they have a different power supply i do recommend getting the power supply that you know is designed exactly for it but the specs of this one, and I got this kit with the case, the board, which is four gig, and the power supply shipped for about 95 US. So yeah, it can get pricey compared to, remember this being a $25 Raspberry Pi thing, but 
I guess inflation hit us a little bit. So let's look at the specs. So it looks like this time around we've got a 27 watt power supply. There's multiple voltages there, so I'm assuming that's USB power delivery and it adjusts the voltage and amperage based on what it needs to pull down. So we're gonna go throw Home Assistant on our new little box here with the micro SD card. Just gonna use Etcher like they normally would and grab the image off of the Home Assistant website and plug it in and go. So one thing I did want to do was just fire up Home Assistant and yeah, the best benchmark for really crunching the CPU is compiling some ESP32 bins in ESP Home. Yeah, if you've been there, you know why. It can take some time, especially even though Raspberry Pi 3 users. For compiling an ESP32 in ESP Home, it's the Raspberry Pi 5. Looks like we're pulling about eight watts, maybe just a little bit over. I hear that fan trying to make sure and keep the CPU cool. So ESP Home is compiling an ESP32 on the Raspberry Pi 4. Looks like we're using about five watts at most. So in this, I did make sure that the fan is not on on this. You really don't need a fan on that. It has that heat sink and everything. So a little bit lower wattage, but probably a lot slower. Now I was surprised to see both the Raspberry Pi 4 and Raspberry Pi 5 both at idle in Home Assistant with them onboarded, just kind of stock dashboard, just sitting there kind of doing nothing. They both used like three watts. I didn't really expect that. Now, of course, you saw there in the video when compiling the ESP32 that, you know, the Raspberry Pi 5 really used a lot more power, but you're going to see why. Let's jump in and look at it. Home Assistant, everybody should know this is the Raspberry Pi 5. I did name them to keep my sanity because it looks the same in every tab and I've got like three home assistants running. So if we go over here to make sure and we do a clean build files, that way it cleans out the cache and we force it to do a full recompile. It's already got all the little components and already you can see the difference here. Now I'm not gonna make you sit through this. I'll just cut to the end. So we're looking at right there, if you can't see it because you're on mobile, about 47 seconds to compile a full ESP32 and a Raspberry Pi 5. Not too bad. So let's jump on over to the Raspberry Pi 4, build the same exact thing. We'll make sure and do clean build files. Again, it's gonna be about the same right there, but I just wanted to kind of pause and you can kind of see where it starts to do the build like on the other one. And yeah, you can tell it's already going to take a little bit longer on the Raspberry Pi 4. So uh, yeah, let's skip to the end and see how long this one was. 139, well, we'll round up 140 seconds. So 140 seconds versus 47 seconds. That's a pretty good performance increase for going to the Raspberry Pi 5. And that's going to go and show you a good, you know, number crunching thing. You know, it may not be applied to everything, but compiling code and bin files and stuff in ESP Home, definitely on any type of system, maxes out all the threads, the cores, everything at like 100%. So that's a really good benchmark. It's a pretty damn impressive that it's not using three times the power, but yet you're getting like three times the performance on this damn thing. Now, going around and using the whole thing, I mean, it's not going to be like this totally impressive difference in the system. I mean, I guess you do get the different pictures when you come over here and go to see the different boards. But, you know, like say if we want to install an add-on. I'm not sure why my text rolls off like that. Maybe someone can answer in the comments. It seems to do it on both of them doesn't do it on my production system and I haven't done anything different. This is just the HOS build straight from their website. So say if I want to install one of the favorites, MQTT, come and hit install. This is the Raspberry Pi 5. It's going to, of course, download things. You're not going to see like massive increases there. I am using the same SD cards between the two. So we'll hit start. Let's go try the same thing. You're probably not going to see a big difference between either of them taking a little bit longer to start than I would expect, but there it is. And we'll come over here, add-ons, add-on store. 
we'll go to MQTT, we'll hit install. This one is the Raspberry Pi 4 again, so it should be just a little bit slower on the whole download and the install and everything for the MQTT. I'm trying to drag on because I don't want to edit this out. I want to show the exact kind of get you the feel for the time to install some of this stuff between like, hey, does it feel really faster between the four or the five or not? So it installed, I'm gonna hit start. Of course, I'm not timing this. If you really wanted to time it, I guess if you could roll back the video and see how long it took to install the add-on and then start the add-on for MQTT. Kind of feels just a little bit faster on the five, not by much for doing some of your typical things. So of course the five still has Bluetooth you're going to pick up, this is some of those little $5 or probably with inflation, they've gone up to $15 now, but those little displays that with the temperature and humidity, those are Bluetooth with BT Home on them. So it does pick those up automatically. It's picking up all my Google speakers and stuff. It's just going to work the same like you always know for Home Assistant to work on HAOS. So that leads down to should you buy the Raspberry Pi 5? Um, ask yourself, do you need to save about three to four watts of power? If it makes that big of a difference, then go ahead. Otherwise, I'm going to say skip the Raspberry Pi 5 for the Home Assistant users. Go check out some of the like N95 computers. I know B-Link has gone up in price recently and I've recommended them in the past. I think a few others have as well, but keep an eye around like Amazon. I'll leave all the links down below if you want to check those out. Of course, check out AliExpress. Others, you can get those little N95 mini PC nooks things. I just saw one that was on sale with coupon for like 120 bucks and it was 256 gig storage, not, you know, whatever SD card you have to buy to put in this Raspberry Pi 5. And it also came with eight gig of RAM. It's in 95, still a massive increase over the performance of the Raspberry Pi 5. Plus you get x86, you can change the storage. It's NVMe, it's gonna be a lot faster in what? It only costs maybe like another 20 or 30 bucks. And I didn't even count the cost of the micro SD card. So that may have put me back another $10. So that would probably put me within 10 or $15 of the Raspberry Pi 5 and a full blown N95 computer. And those run around seven, maybe eight watts at most at idle, which is right around in this realm. I mean, really you're under 10 watts for idle at the GUI of Home Assistant. and it does a lot better. So I do appreciate that they are, you know, making things quicker and stuff for these mini computers and single board computers. But um, yeah, it's just things have gotten so much cheaper on the x86 side, especially if you really want to dig into is some of the small form factors, the SFFs or the, even the USFF ultra small form factors, you can find some refurbs for even less than $100 out there. And just, it blows the performance out of a Raspberry Pi. And you know, you got more storage options to boot. So that about do it for this one. Appreciate you watching. Thanks to all the YouTube members and the Patreon subscribers. Definitely couldn't do it without you. And yep, you'll know all the drill. Press all them buttons and y'all take care.